<coughs> Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I'm going to share with you a couple of sermons that I've done. I've preached these in the past, so they're on video somewhere else. But also, um, recently I, 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 I preached them at uh, my local church, a uh, church in the south side of Manchester. Um, and so I'd like to share these sermons with you, and uh, I hope that, that they're a blessing to you. So if we come before the Lord, I'll try and keep it to about half an hour each sermon. So there's two sermons. I'll try to go for half an hour. But we'll see how, how the Lord leads. Let's, let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We give you the prayers and we give you the glory and we give you the honour. And Father, I pray that these sermons, uh, two sermons, Lord, on ministry, I pray that you bless for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, first of all, the first sermon, and don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, on Royal Blood Ministries website and uh, Twitter. But uh, this sermon is Bearing Fruit in Gospel Ministry. Bearing Fruit in Gospel Ministry. And uh, the text that you could read, I'm reading from the Revised Standard, English Standard Version. I normally use the King James. I'm a King James man. I've got my King James there. But I'm just going to use this because it, it, uh, it's just a big translation and uh, I find it very helpful to carry. But I, I, I normally use my King James, so I'm a King James man. Uh, in James 15 chapter uh, sorry in John chapter 15 verse 1 John chapter 15 verse 1 it says I am the true vine and my father is the gardener and in, if you read that passage it's about bearing fruit and if you was to read Matthew chapter 13 verse 1 to 23 uh, there it's about the parable of the sower that they sow that the sower sows seed and some seed falls on bad ground, but some seed bears fruit. And the Lord wants us to bear fruit in our ministry and in our lives. So the question is, how do we bear fruit? How do we bear fruit in ministry? Well, the first point is, bearing fruit in gospel ministry, we keep our eyes on Christ. The heart pumps the blood and without the heart there would be no life and the heart of Christianity is Christ and if we're not focusing Christ on Christ then the, the, the pumping of the heart spiritually will not work when we think of Christ he always brings life if our, if our minds are focused on Christ he brings life if we focus on anything else it brings death if we focus on our worries it brings death if we focus on Christ, he brings life. So, if you would turn, turn to John chapter 1, we, we'll go to a few verses. So if you turn to John uh, chapter 1, you know the verse. John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, without him was not anything made that was made. Christ is God. And he is the creator and in John 1 verse 4 in him was the life and the light and the life was the light of men Christ is not only God not only the creator but he brings life in John chapter 1 verse 5 he was not the light but came to bear witness about the light verse 9 the true light which lighteth everyone who comes into the world verse 5 Sorry, verse, uh, John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
So Christ is God. Christ is the creator. Christ brings life. Christ is the light. In John chapter 2 verse 7 and 8, he turns water into wine. In John 4, 13 and 14, he says, if anyone's thirsty, come to him. In John 6 verse 5 to 13, he multiplies the fish and the bread and says, I'm the bread of life. And wherever the Lord is, he brings life. It's kind of like a... a a autumn leaf and you leave the autumn leaf on the floor and it rots but when when spring comes and the when when, when summer comes the, the 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 oak tree is blossoming with leaves and when we're focused on Christ it's like the spring and the summer coming in our lives he brings life so don't concentrate on your worries don't concentrate on your needs don't concentrate on your difficulties. Don't concentrate on your perplexities. Concentrate your mind and focus upon Christ. Praise Him, worship Him, honor Him, adore Him, and bring glory to Him. And there will be life within your ministry. Secondly, Christ desires to be intimate with you. What husband and wife, if a husband and wife were here, if the husband never spoke to the wife or the wife never was with the husband, they were always separate, then it would be no marriage. It would be a dead marriage. There would be no death. There would be no intimacy. And with Christ, the one thing that he wants with you is intimacy. The one thing he wants with you is for you to spend time alone with him. In John chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and the Lord says you must be born again but the Lord wanted intimacy with Nicodemus quiet time special time intimate time with Nicodemus in John chapter 4 verse 9 and 13 the Samaritan woman comes to the well and the Lord has a one-on-one -on -one talk with her and says you must worship in spirit and truth but he gives a time, he, he, he has an intimate time with her. God's not wanting you to be a great preacher or to be a great minister or great and famous or, or with a title, reverend, professor, whatever. God's not interested in what men think about you. You might want a reputation with men. What God is interested in is that you have intimacy with him. That you know him, that you feel his heart, that you feel his beat within your life. That you are intimate with Christ and Christ is intimate with you. So often we're so busy, we feel that we've got to be busy in our marriage or busy in our ministry or busy. And we're busy, busy, busy. But no, the Lord wants us to be intimate with him, spend time with him, be close to him. Bearing fruit in gospel ministry, not only is it focusing on Christ, not only is it being intimate with Christ, but it's also being persecuted for Christ. William Tyndale, the great translator of the Bible in English, 1492 to 1538, was killed for the faith. John Bunyan was put in prison. The great uh, preacher and writer was put in prison. Charles Simeon, the great preacher at Cambridge from 1759 to 1835, I think he lived, was so persecuted that he was locked out of his own church. He couldn't preach in his own church. They locked him out. He had to sneak round the back. And if you follow the Lord, you'll be persecuted. <clears throat> in John chapter 8, verse 59, they wanted to stone the Lord. In John 11, 8, they wanted to stone him. In John 11, 47, 48, they plotted against him. In John 13, 27, Judas betrayed him. In John 19, 15, crowds bade him. In John 19, 1, people whipped him. In John 19, 34, they crucified him. Leonard Ravenhill says, if a Christian is not having tribulation in the world, there is something wrong. Thomas Watson, the great Puritan, said, Religion will cost us the tears of repentance and the blood of persecution. If Christians in, in the Middle East are dying for their faith,
cannot you stand for the faith when you are being called a Bible basher? Romans 8.17 says, let's go to Romans uh, 8.17. Romans 8.17. Romans 8.17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified in him. We should be willing to suffer for Christ. In 1 Peter 4, 12 and 16, suffering for the gospel is a norm. We mustn't go out to create suffering, but suffering will come to us. 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. That, you know, rejoice in your suffering. You will suffer for the gospel. You will suffer for the gospel. But God is a God of all comfort. In 2 Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians 1. If you turn to your Bible. 2 Corinthians 1. What are you listening to a Bible study for? Or a sermon when you haven't got your Bible, you should be checking whether what I'm saying is right or wrong. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in, if, in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Let's read that again. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in affliction any affliction God will comfort you but my friend if you're going to follow the Lord if you're going to serve the Lord you will be persecuted no nambi pambi Christianity no softy softy Christianity no Nambi Pambi Teddy Bear Christianity, no cotton wool Christianity, no ostrich hedge Christianity, where you put your head in the sand and it's all nicey nicey and it's all sweet sweet. No, no, no. If Latimer and Ridley were burned at the stake, if Adonai Judson was hung upside down, if David Brainard was kicked out of college, if they went through all that for the preaching of the gospel, then you, my friend, can stand for the faith in the area where God has put you. Stand firm, my friend. And then, being a preacher in gospel ministry. So we've looked at focusing on Christ, being intimate with Christ, and that we will be persecuted for Christ. And then being a preacher for Christ is the final point. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was one of the great preachers of the 20th century. He was a great preacher. He had thousands of people come to hear him preach. But, not many people know this. It's in Ian Murray's uh, Life of um, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, Volume 2. But there was a guy who came to visit Lloyd-Jones and he was always depressed, never could get any peace. Most ministers would have said, oh, I've had enough of you. You're a pain in the neck. You're a hypochondriac. But not Lloyd-Jones. Every week, Lloyd-Jones met with that man and shared the love of God and talked in Romans 8 and, and, and went through Romans 8 about the love of God and tried to help that man see the love of God in his depression. Lloyd-Jones showed love. He preached with his life as well as verbally. In Ephesians 5, 25, 33, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And then let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. If we speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I gave away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I am nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice 
at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part. Then shall I know fully, even as I am being fully known. So now faith, hope and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. We're to preach with our life and to, we're to show a life of love. If you turn to John 15, 9 and 7, John 15, 9 and 7, John 15, 9 and 7, it says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abided in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Walk in love. And then you can read 1 John chapter 4. Let's do that. So we get the full implication. 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 12. We read, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And then it goes on about don't hate. So, if we're going to be fruitful in ministry, we've got to have a, a life of love, where we walk in love. But then, not only are we to live a life of love, we're to preach, we're to speak the words of God. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And here is the great problem of the age in the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. It says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will throw. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. Here it is. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand a sign and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But did you hear that? We preach Christ crucified. I want to say something now. A lot of modern evangelicals say you've got to preach with your life. They love that. Put a cool t-shirt on, be cool, be nice, preach with your life, but don't preach the message. Don't speak the message because it's offensive. People don't like it. This is absolute nonsense. This is an absolute disgrace. No, we preach with our life, but we preach the message as well. It's commanded that we preach. It says here, it says here, look, verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. We preach, not just with our life, but we preach with our mouth. We speak it out, the message. Now, it's important that you, 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 you remember this. It's, it, it, you should never be ashamed of preaching the gospel. That Jesus took the punishment for our sin, that he took the wrath that we deserve. That in his love, he shed his blood and gave his life for us. And that if we repent and believe in him, we shall be saved. We need to speak this message. We need to preach this message. We need to declare this message. But so often, modern evangelicals want to tone down. Don't preach about hell. Don't preach about uh, the wrath of God. Don't preach Christ crucified. It's offensive. So what? It says preach. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 and 9, it says there's no other gospel. In 2 Corinthians uh, Fifth chapter 5 verse 18 to 20 it says we are Christ ambassadors and as ambassadors you can't change the message you can't mold the message to the culture you can't mold the message to suit you no you as an ambassador you've got to speak what the king or the leader has sent you to speak we've got to speak what God has told us to speak and that is Christ crucified and that he rose again 
But we preach with our life, we preach with the word, but we don't preach in our own strength, we preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 5, uh, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. 1 Thessalonians One Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 says Because our gospel came to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake So the gospel came in the demonstration of the spirit and the power There is the such thing as what is called the sacred anointing And it, it, it's sad that many, many people today do not pray for the preachers. The preachers are never going to be effective if you don't pray for them. Pray that the anointing would come upon them. Pray that the sacred anointing of the baptism of the Holy Ghost as they preach the Word of God would come upon their preaching. You need to pray that. And as a preacher, you need to pray that as you're preaching, it's not dead orthodoxy you're preaching, but it's life and power in the Holy Spirit. You need to pray that the anointing would come upon you. When Spurgeon would get into the pulpit, he would pray, Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. My friends, pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the preaching of the Word of God. So in John 15 verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. In John chapter 6, 35, it says, Jesus is the bread. In John 8, 12, Jesus is the light. In John 10, 12, Jesus is the gate. John 10, 14, Jesus is the Good Shepherd. John eleven twenty five, 25, He is the Resurrection. John 14, 6, He is the Way, the Truth, and the Life. And John 8, 58, He existed before time. Christ the Saviour, Christ the Lord. Do you want to bear fruit in ministry? Focus on Christ. Lift Him up. Meditate on Him. Think about Him. Obey Him. Trust Him. Worship Him. And put Him at the centre. Put Give time to him give time in prayer to him give time to meditate on him and then my friends as you serve the lord you will be persecuted there will be a backlash there will be comeback it will not be easy you will be attacked for the faith but also remember that we preach the gospel we preach it with our life we live a life of love but we do not just preach with our life we preach with words we speak the message we proclaim the message. That is biblical Christianity. And then, my friends, we do not do it in our own strength. We depend upon the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, my friends, you might be a pastor. And the ministry is hard and it's difficult. And you don't seem to be going forward in your ministry. It seems to be barren and dry. May it be dry is because maybe you've taken your eyes off Christ and focused on the problems in the church. Maybe you're dry because you've been so busy in ministry, you're not spending time in prayer with Jesus. Or maybe it's dry because you've compromised the truth. You, you please men rather than God. And if you please God, you'll be persecuted. But as you're persecuted, you'll bear fruit. But what you've done is you've been in a denomination. It might be the Anglicans, the Baptists, the Methodists. It might be in your own church and you've compromised the truth. You, you, you knew you had to stand for the truth. But you're compromised and now there's barrenness in your ministry. You need to repent and you need to stand up for the gospel in your denomination and in your church. And then you'll bear fruit, but there'll be persecution. Or maybe your, your ministry is barren because you're not loving, because there's a hardness in your spirit. You become hard to the people. You become hard to the people around you. You need to ask the Lord to soften your heart, to give you a love for your people. And then your ministry might be barren because you're just not telling people about heaven and hell and Christ crucified. And you've watered that down and God is not blessing you. And then you might not be fruitful and it might be barren because you might have the doctrine, you might have the books, you might have everything in place, but you are doing it in your own strength. You've become so confident in your own ability you become so well respected so well admired that you barren because there's a lack of power in your preaching and it's because you're not praying for the 
demonstration of the spirit and of power and you're not coming to a realization that no matter how much well respected you are no matter how much you've achieved at the end of the day you can't achieve anything unless you depend upon the power of the Holy Ghost and that comes in your marriage and in your relationships the same in your relationships with your family are you focusing on Christ or are you focusing on your problems are you spending time with Christ or are you becoming too busy? Are you living the life of love in your family? Or have you become bitter and unkind? Are you speaking the truth to your family? Or have you compromised? And are you resting in the power of the Holy Spirit? Or are you doing things in your family life in the flesh? And if you do, it will bring barrenness. So let us pray. Let us pray that we be fruitful. Let us pray that we would obey God and serve God and live for God and be fruitful in our ministries. Father, we thank you for this day. And I pray for all those that heard this word, that hear this word, that Father, you would give them fruit in their labors, fruit in their marriages, fruit in their family, fruit in their ministries. Father, I pray that this message would be bring fruit to their lives and refresh them and renew them and strengthen them, Lord. And that, Father, you will bless them. Father, fill them tonight with your love and blessings. Fill them with your grace and fill them with your goodness. And bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. If you've been blessed by this ministry, thank you. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, you can always uh, donate to Patreon. You can go to my Twitter account or my Facebook and find the link somewhere uh, in the history of there. And also uh, PayPal, uh, my, um, my um, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, Hotmail account is zwima at hotmail.co.uk, zwema, Z-W-E-M-E-R, zwema at hotmail.co.uk. UK. If you want to donate, you can go to PayPal. That's my email. So I just hope that's a blessing. And uh, I just pray that, that that's fed you and encouraged you. And if it does, I just pray that you will go on in your ministry, in your life. Uh, and be blessed. Keep in touch. Uh, and, uh, you know, God bless you. And uh, I hope that's been a blessing. So God bless you. Okay, I'm going to do the next one. This is Bearing Fruit in Gospel Ministry. We're going to do now... Uh, the fight in gospel ministry. God bless you.